Karen Bass joins us live now from Washington. Congresswoman, good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you as well. All right. So I feel like we've been on this journey with you every step of the way. Originally, we asked you if you were being vetted. Uh, you said you That's weren't. Right. Then you started to be vetted a few days later. We've been on it every step of the way. But if you can, now that it's over, take us behind the scenes a little bit and what the process was actually like. And also what that phone call with Joe Biden was like uh, when he told you that you're you're not getting the job. <laughs> sure. Well, first of all, I do have to tell you that it was an incredible honor. Honor and very humbling and a surreal experience. And I think I shared that with you with you earlier. I'll tell you, there's a, a small group of people that know a whole lot about me. <laughs> but uh, I am uh, happy that I was invited uh, to be a part of the process. And, you know, the conversation with the vice president is about me looking forward to serving and to continue to work. The next 83 days, I am focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's making sure that he is President Biden in January. And very excited and honored that our senator, I mean, from California, shout out to our state, will be serving alongside of him. I think it was an exciting rollout today. I know she is gonna energize folks. She's gonna energize women. The fact that she's the first woman of color both of, of African-American and um, Asian heritage. So I think we're in for a very exciting couple of months. What, what but I'm is, ready for it to be over and ready for January what, to be here. Our country needs relief. What did, uh, what did the vice president say to you? What's that sort of conversation like? Well, I don't really want to talk about a private conversation with the <laughs> vice president, but I will tell you that the focus on the future, the focus on what the country needs, the focus on his policies, and the fact that our country just can't move forward until we address this pandemic and what we really need to do in order to do that. I mean, the American people are hurting. The American people are in danger, in danger from the virus and hurting from the economic side. What? And so my message to him was, I think that Kamala Harris is going to be an excellent vice president, and I'm ready to serve in whatever way they might need me on the campaign trail or in the administration. I mean, what was this, this whole experience uh, like? Because there, for a lot of people, they didn't really know that much about you on the national stage. We've known you for, for a very long <laughs> right. time here in Southern California, and there's a lot of unbelievably positive stories about you, and then there's this opposition research that's dumped yes. from somebody, and who knows if it was one of the other candidates that was running for this job or not, and, and you just are in, in this world. I mean, what does that feel like to be in that world? Well, you know, um, I didn't choose to run for president. And so I'm sure for those women that were involved in the process that did choose to run for, that uh, chose to run, they were used to this for months. So for me, it was just weeks. It was exciting to see some of the stories that came out. Now, some of the distortions with the uh, op research or whatever it was, I mean, some of that was funny to read and some of it was just a little pathetic. But I will tell you that many of my colleagues in Congress came up to me and said, wow, you know, I've really enjoyed reading about you, really enjoyed learning about you, didn't know you had done all of those things. And so, you know, I'm not one that runs around promoting myself or work that I've done. It's always about the issues. It's always about the people. And so I think that people learned about me and what I hope to do from here. And the most important thing is since my profile has been raised, I want to use this to really put out opinions, analysis, be thoughtful, talk about what the country needs, what's to move us forward, how to bring people together. That's the level that I want to be involved in. Our country needs to heal, and I want to participate as one of the healers. You know, there's a lot of people that think that you should do that yeah, healing there. as a member of the United States Senate. If Kamala Harris becomes the vice president, there will be an open seat there Governor Gavin Newsom will have the job of filling it. So I asked him about that process today, and there was a bit of a funny exchange. Take a listen. I'm curious if anybody has already started to pitch themselves as a replacement to you. Well, you may be the only one that hasn't, um, unless you just did. Um, and that 
is only slight exaggeration. Um, and I mean, if he's offering, I, I would take it, by the way. <laughs> so are, are, are you yeah. interested? <laughs> well, let me just tell you. <laughs> let me just tell you, I am not one of those that have pitched myself <laughs> to him. <laughs> now, <laughs> in terms of what the future brings, I definitely want to keep my options open. The bottom line for me is, is that I want to serve. I want to continue you working on the issues I've been working on for a very long time, maybe from a different stage, but I'm also quite happy here in the House. So I'm not ruling anything out. I want to look at everything. I, but well, most important to me, the next 83 days. Well, and let's talk about, uh, about an issue that's so important to people, because we can talk all we want about who gets what job and partisan fighting and everything, but there are so many folks right now that are watching this in your district that are really struggling to make ends meet. Many of them unemployed right now because of the coronavirus through no fault of their own. Some of their businesses being shut down essentially by the government. Right. And there's this $600 in extra unemployment insurance that a lot of them have come to rely on, which has now run out. And it seems like the negotiations on Capitol Hill have essentially stopped. Where are things at on that front? And what do you say to a lot of your constituents that are really concerned tonight? Well, you know, exactly for that reason, I did a telephone town hall the other day. But the main thing that I want to say to my constituents is, I'm sorry. I am disgusted by the whole process that is taking place here. The nerve, the nerve of the administration to quibble over a $600 a week check when they have given billions, billions of dollars to individual industries. Now, I don't want to see the industries fail, but they didn't even want to say where the money was going. And they're going to quibble over a $600 check. And basically, they're doing that because they say that it's a disincentive, that people are making so much money off of this $600 a week check that they don't want to go back to work, completely negating the fact of what you just said. People don't have jobs to go back to or they're not safe while they work. And so I think the whole thing is despicable. In the Senate, McConnell has completely abdicated his role. Everything is falling on the shoulders of Speaker Pelosi. She is the only one that is trying to govern at this point in time, and she has to deal directly with the White House because the Senate is, is uh, closed. I guess they're on vacation. I'm not sure what McConnell is doing. Maybe he's at home campaigning. But it is, it is shameful that we are quibbling over a $600 a week check. And just real quickly, in the past when we've talked about this, you said the Republicans would essentially come to their senses because the political will would be so much so that they'd have to. They haven't here. How do we, how do, we do this? How do we come to a deal? You know, I also said to you that I did not believe that they would let the unemployment run out. I thought we would take it right up to the brink because that's usually what we do. But I really didn't think that they would unnecessarily inflict pain. I was upset that they were inflicting anxiety. I didn't think people needed the stress. I felt that they would come to a deal and they absolutely refused to. But like I said, they're not even negotiating. <laughs> Speaker Pelosi has to deal with the White House because the Senate leadership is just not even participating in the process. And meanwhile, there's so many people that are really hurting uh, in, the, in the process. Congresswoman, thank you so exactly. much for sharing your views throughout this uh, very strange process. <laughs> it is uh, always great to talk with you. And, 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 and thanks and, for being on the journey with me. And, and who knows, maybe at this time next year, you will be Senator Karen Bass. Who knows? Just throwing it out there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Coming up next.